kept you waiting. As you know, we are gathered here for the reading of the will, the last will and testament of the late Francis Xavier Mahoney, who passed away at the age of 87 years, leaving an estate of over half a million dollars. Uh, I'm sure you're all aware of that fact. Did he say half a million dollars? Did you hear what Michael, was... please. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me a moment while I see if I have everything in order. Joe, what was that lady back? That's Abby Fairchild. She was Uncle Frank's housekeeper for centuries. If this was a murder mystery, she'd be one of the suspects. Michael, shh. <laughs> Joe, who was the elderly gentleman supposed to be? Oh, that's Ben Garvey. For 35 years, he was Uncle Frank's chauffeur, butler, gardener, general handyman. You don't suppose maybe he, uh, with Michael... Uncle... Michael, Michael, Uncle Frank died of natural causes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, now, if I may have your attention, please, we will proceed with the business at hand. I, Francis Xavier Mahoney, being of sound mind and in full possession of my senses, do hereby constitute this my last will and testament. As of this date, the net asset value of my real and personal property comes to the sum of a bird bath and an Abyssinian banana. Bird bath. <laughs> I'm sorry, there are some pages stuck together. I'll have to do a little rearranging. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I wish he'd hurry up. You know, now, Uncle Frank and I never got along. Ever since I told him that green china cat of his was just a piece of junk, he wouldn't speak to me. I was, I didn't know it was his favorite art object. There, I think that does it. Now I'll take up where I left off. As of this date, the net asset value of my real and personal property comes to the sum of <coughs> five, five, <coughs> excuse me, I need a glass of water. Shall I, shall I pour it for you, sir? Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Top fell and I'll get it right. Mm. Oh, the, uh, it's, it's stuck in the Easy now. Wait a minute. It's coming. Oh, it's, wait a minute. Okay. There it is. Thank you, sir. You see, it was just my fingers had, uh, and then I'll just <coughs> wash it out. Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. Oh. I'm awfully sorry. It's, it's all right. I'm sure you didn't anybody else to do have it. gotten so mad at me. If that's Thank you. Sufficient? Yes. Enough? Sure. I have plenty here. I. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. Excuse me. Now, if you will agree to remain in your chair, I will risk continuing. <laughs> the net asset value of my real and personal property comes to the sum of $530,280.95. And right. now come the bequests. <clears throat> to my faithful, loyal, and hardworking housekeeper, Miss Abby Fairchild, who has served me well for the past 23 years, managed my household efficiently, anticipated my every wish, prepared my meals, and paid all the bills with never a word of criticism or complaint, I give, devise, and bequeath the sum of one dollar. Don't frown, Abby. I happen to know that you have held out from the household budget enough money to take care of you very comfortably for the rest of your life. And to my loyal chauffeur, gardener, and jack of all trades, Ben Garvey, who has been like a right arm to me for the past 30 years, I leave the sum of one dollar. Hey, that must make it look pretty up, bad. Ben, I happen to know that you are secretly married to Abby, so you won't starve either. Which brings me to my closest living relative, Joseph Patrick Mulligan. 
whose taste in art is certainly in need of improvement. I leave something I hope he will learn to appreciate, my green china cat. Is that all? My green one. Period. <laughs> As for the remaining 530,000 odd dollars, I have only one relative left, Michael Mulligan. But I am not going to leave it to him. Not exactly. I am naming Michael Mulligan guardian of my adopted child, to whom I bequeath my entire fortune. Guardian, Pop, what does he mean? I had already decided to leave my worldly wealth to my adopted daughter, Susie, aged 17 months, before I changed my will. I am thankful I was allowed to live long enough to accomplish this. Oh, look, I, I'm sorry. I don't think I could be the guardian. You see, I'm not even married. <laughs> I hereby designate Michael Mulligan as legal guardian of Susie Mahoney and her fortune until she shall reach the age of 21 or marry. Oh, but really, Mr. Lowe, Michael can't think of assuming the responsibility of caring for a baby. Of course not. He's too young. It's entirely out of his line. What was Uncle Francis thinking of to do a thing like this? Oh, just some more revenge because I criticize his green china cat. Mr. Lowe, we can't assume the responsibility. You'll just have to work something else out. It's entirely out of the question. We don't have enough room in our house. Coochie, coochie, coochie. Coochie. He'll wake the baby. Darn screw Joe, there. watch it. After all, this is a baby's room. I think it's cute, Mickey being guardian of a baby. I can hardly wait to see them together. Yeah, but the baby will wind up taking care of Michael. <laughs> no, Joe, you're mistaken. Having a baby has changed, Michael. There's nothing childish about him anymore. He's settled down. Suddenly, he's mature. Say. Yeah, <laughs> really mature. I hope Susie can ride this thing. It's very dangerous. It's putting her through me three times coming through the living room. Well, Dad... How do you like the way we decorated your daughter's room? It's very nice, Pat, very nice. But don't you think we ought to have those fluorescent clouds on the ceiling that light up when the room is dark? Not at $2.78 a cloud, we don't. Uh, and, uh, and, and this here, don't you think it's a little flimsy, Pop? And stop calling me Pop. From now on, you're Pop. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, it's just that I didn't want her to break out of this, that's all. Oh, there'll be no danger of that. We'll have a 24-hour guard posted. I know why you're all making fun of me, making with the jokes. You don't think that I can handle this situation. Well, I want you to know I know what I'm getting myself into. Of course you do, son. In that book I read on child psychology, it told of the pitfalls that a father can look for by having a baby girl. Well, father's little boys can have pitfalls, too. When they're young, it's the measles. As they get a little older, it's boyfriends. It isn't easy, but it's worth every minute of the pain. That's why I wanted to give up my room and sleep on the couch. You're lucky. For a month after you were born, I had to sleep in the bathtub. <laughs> I can see I'm not going to get any sympathy here. Pat, shall we go in the kitchen and check the formula? Right away, Pop. I can see with my own eyes, I'd never believe it. How long do you think he's going to neglect that hopped-up jalopy of his for the baby? Oh, I think it's sweet, Joe. Oh, Joe. What's the matter, now? I just realized something. What? I'm a grandmother. <laughs> yes? Mr. Brown, sir? Oh, it's you. I should have known this wonderful day couldn't go on forever. Uh, Mr. Brown, if I may, I'd just like to offer you a little cigar. No tricks. Oh, I assure you, it's no trick cigar, sir. You see, I... I've just become a father. Oh. Father? Yes, sir. In fact, the baby just arrived about... about 19 minutes ago. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. Boy or girl? Girl, 17 months old. 17 months old? <laughs> and it just arrived? Yes, sir, by air. 
No, <laughs> hold it, hold it. <laughs> Evidently, you and I are talking about two different subjects. Let's start over again, huh? Yes. <clears throat> I was under the impression you told me you were a father. Uh, that's correct, sir. It is? Yes, 17-month-old girl. Now, let's not start that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, if what you tell me is true, that classifies you as a cad. But, Mr. Brown, You've I... been married all this time, and yet you've led Pat to believe you were a single man. That's contemptible. No, no, but, Mr. Brown, sir... Pat, will you come in, please? I have some very shocking news for you. You have something mixed up, Mr. Brown. Yes, Mr. Brown? Pat, I want to expose Mulligan here for the bounder he really is. Bounder? That, that, that sounds worse than a cad. Pat... Did you know that he was the father of a baby girl? 17 months old, sir. Don't confuse the issue. Oh, then Mickey's told you about little Susan. Well, Isn't it wonderful? Wonderful? I must say you have a queer sense of values. Well, I don't see anything queer about them. Why, well, I look forward to helping Mickey take care of the baby. How does his wife feel about that? Oh, Mr. Brown, you misunderstand. Mickey isn't married. No, he's not married. He's been appointed legal guardian of little Susan. That's right, just guardian, sir. You neglected to fill me in on that little detail. That makes quite a difference. Well, Mr. Brown, Mickey, I've been has trying... has the baby arrived yet? What does it look like? Well, she's arriving now. Mom and Pop are at the airport meeting her. I haven't seen her yet. I'll see her when I get off work tonight. Oh, I want to go. Oh, Mickey, isn't it thrilling? It certainly is. Why don't you two run along? you would be no good around here anyway. Oh, thank well, you. May Mr. we, Mr. Brown? Go ahead, run along. Oh, uh, wait just a moment, Mr. Brown, please, sir. I, uh... I go. I'm running a little short. This is for Mr. Gordon and transcriptions. <laughs> Don't worry about it, please. I'm sure we can straighten the whole thing out. But this is going to come as quite a shock to Michael. Yes, he sure had his heart set on that baby. Here he is. You explain to him, Joe. Hi, folks. Stopped by on the way and got some more toys. Where is she? Michael, there's something I have to explain. Later, will you please, Pop? Father's home. Susie. Susie. Yes, It isn't mine. I'm only her guardian until she gets married. Well, why don't you marry her? What about Pat? Oh, yeah, I forgot about Pat. You should say you did. You better give it some thought, though, you know? Please, Freddy. You know, I can't get over the shock yet, walking in expecting to find a baby Susie and seeing a big, tall Susie. What made everybody think she was a baby? Mr. Lowe, the lawyer, he read the will wrong. He said it was my fault because I, I spilled water on the paper and blotted out one of the commas. Here, I've got a copy of the will. This is how he read it. I had already decided to leave all my worldly wealth to my adopted daughter, comma, Susie, comma, age 17 months, comma, before I changed my will. Now, this is how he was supposed to have read it. I had already decided to leave all my worldly wealth to my adopted daughter, huh, Susie, huh, age 17, huh, comma, months before I changed my will. Mm. Boing, period. <laughs> See, I guess you sure gotta watch those comments. I certainly do. Oh, excuse me, I was looking for Napa. Oh, Susan. Susan, I'd like you to meet my best friend, Freddie Devlin. This is my ward, Susie. Hi. Shake hands with him, darling. <laughs> Gee, Mick, you didn't tell me she was this cute. Yes, she is a lovely girl. You're cute, too. I, I think you look like a million. Half a million, anyway. <laughs> well, uh, well, I didn't mind, Freddie. Tell me, Susie, have you... Have you got any boyfriends? Well, well Freddie, uh, Susie, Freddie and I would like to talk in private. We'll excuse you now, dear. Yes. Yeah. Nice to have met you, Freddie. It, it's only the beginning, Susie. Uh, thank you, Susie. We excuse you. Thank you. Bye. Have you lost your head? Have you lost your head, boy? What's the matter? What's the matter? Listen, don't you realize that she's my ward? She's my responsibility, and I don't want you to botch it up? Oh, Mick, all I was just being neighborly. Yeah, well, be neighborly with somebody else's half a million, will you? I couldn't help it if she fell for me just like that. Why, the moment she looked at me, she lit up like a neon sign. Girls like Susie attract fortune hunters, and it's my job to weed out the hamburger from the round ground. <laughs> Mick, I'm no hamburger. I'm round ground. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm your pal. Yeah. All I want is a date, Mick. All right, you can have a date. Just give me an application in triplicate, two bank references, and your credit rating, and I'll let you know. Application in triplicate? Mick, all I want is a date. Good night, Freddy. Freddy, good night. But, uh, wait a minute, Mick. I... Good night, Fred. 
But make all of it. You just listen. I'll call you. Don't call me. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of you people, but I'm ready for bed. Me too. That should do it. And don't stay up too late, you two. I'll be right in myself. Good night, kids. Good night, family. Good night. Well, I'll be turning in, too. Good night, Mickey. Oh, wait just a moment, Susie, my dear. I would like to, if I may, have a chat with you. What well, must be serious. You're using your guardian voice. Susie, you are reaching an age where you're going to meet a certain type of young man. A type like, uh, oh, Freddy. Oh, I think he's cute. Freddy cute? <laughs> That's just a trap. Do uh, you know that he spends an hour trying to comb his hair to make it look like it's not combed? I can't believe it. That's right. Well, Freddie seems so sophisticated. So sophisticated? Freddie? Oh, 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 child sophisticated. <laughs> you do have a lot to learn. Now, don't let his appearance fool you. He might look like a 22-year-old man, but he's actually much older. He's 24 and a half. I like mature men. <laughs> Tell me, child, do you know any young men your own age? Well, there's Harold. Harold? Uh, he's 21. That's nice. Harold and I were going to be married last month. Mm. But before we could get permission, Uncle Francis died. That's too bad. Then later on, Harold and I had a spat, and I was sent out here. I guess it's all over between Harold and me. Don't you fret. It was probably all for the best. He might have been a, a fortune hunter for all we know. Harold is worth two million dollars. <laughs> It's typical of those rich fellows. They're always fortune hunters. <laughs> Gee, you know a lot about life. Yes, I've learned through experiences. Bitter, unforgettable experiences. And now that you've come to the city, I want to warn you about the wolves. Wolves? I want to show you how to handle them. Let's, uh, let's just take the piano stool here and pretend like it's a... Uh, it's a bus bench here, you see? And this will be a, a street lamp. And you'll be seated on the bench waiting for your bus. Okay, I'm waiting for the bus. That's right, and I'll be a stranger. I'll pretend like it, and, and, and I'll try and make a date with you. All right. Good. Here we go. <clears throat> Why, hello there, little dream doll. How about a date tonight? Oh, I'd love to. No, 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 <laughs> Susan, no, no, no. You don't speak to strangers, Susie, and if a fellow persists upon pestering you, you holler for the police and slap his face. You understand that? Uh-huh. Good, now we'll try it again. Excuse me. <clears throat> Why, hello there, little dream doll. How about a date tonight? Come on, melt those icicles. We could make beautiful music together. Look at that moon up there. Our name is written right across it. Why fight it? It's bigger than both of us. Help! Police! Very good. Help! Police! Now Help! You... Police! Help! Police! Take it easy. Help! Police! Help! Susie, police! Susie! Susie! Help! Susie! Help! Wait a minute. Don't get Help! carried away. Police! Don't! <laughs> something off my mind. Yeah, I want to talk to you about some Susie troubles I've got, too. Well, that's what well, I no, want... No, no, don't, don't talk here. Let's keep moving so it looks like we're busy. I want to talk to you, Mick, about Susie. I don't like the way you said that, Freddy. I don't like the way you oh, said no, that wait, at all. Wait a minute. Look, I don't want to talk to you as my pal, Mick. I want to talk to you as Susie's guardian. As Susie's guardian? Yeah. <clears throat> Very well. <clears throat> What's on your mind, son? <clears throat> well, sir, uh, I would like to ask you for... Susie's hand in marriage. Susie's hand? Which one? The one with the money in it? No, no, no. It's not the only one. I'm not interested in Susie's hand. I don't, I don't want to marry her for her money. Oh, really? I'm interested in her because I want to take care of her. Mm -hmm. I want to protect her. Yeah. She needs somebody to take care of all that money. You cad. Now, now wait a minute. You're not only a cad, you're a bounder, Freddy. Nick, I'm your buddy. Look, as my buddy, I, I, I like you, Freddy. But as my son-in-law... Mm -mm. I couldn't like you. Well, what do you mean? Well, every Father's Day, you're going to have to buy me a tie, right? Right. And you have miserable taste, Fred. <laughs> no, never in a million years could I let you marry Susie. Besides, you're not going to be around for a million years. Why? Her boyfriend just got in town. 
His name is Harold Banks. He's from Boston. He's one of the Boston banks. Uh-oh. That means we don't have too much time. Say we don't. I heard them say that they want to do a lope any minute. Oh, there goes the whole ball game. That's why I've been trying to keep them busy watching shows. They're in Studio A right now watching that quiz program, Win or Lose. But if, if, if they want to elope, I don't see how we're going to stop them. By keeping them busy watching the shows. And then after I get off of work, I can keep my eye on them personally. I tell you, Freddie, they're not going to elope if I have anything to say about it. That a boy, Mick. Oh, here's Pat now. Hiya, Pat. I can't talk now, Mickey. I'm in an awful hurry. What's the matter? We're having trouble with a show that goes on in a half an hour. The contestants didn't show up. Well, can Harold and Susie watch your show after they get out of Studio A? Well, sure, if they hurry up. Oh, Mr. Brown is so upset. Yeah. Oh, here they are now. Yeah. Harold, uh, Susie. We well, sure enjoyed the show. Yeah, what, would you like to see another one? Another one? Yes, I... I, I I don't know what show it's going to be, but I'm sure you'll enjoy it. You just go with Pat, huh? Come on with me. That takes care of 3.30 to 4. <laughs> hey, Dewey. Hi, Mick. Say, how much longer is that sneak preview show going to go on in there? A couple of minutes. Why don't you take a coffee break? We'll take over for you. Sure. Good. Now, look, Freddy. When they come out of here, we'll take them over to the Safari Stand show. That'll take care of 4.30 to 5. But what are we going to do? Oh, Fred, listen, we've got a problem here with time. What are we going to do with them from 5 to 5.30? Hey, I wonder what show they're previewing in here. The Tumbleweed Tim show? We could take them into Studio C and they could watch Eddie Fisher rehearse. No, nah, no, nah, it couldn't be Tumbleweed Tim. I know. The amateur show. Hmm? In there? Oh, yeah. no, the amateurs were last week. That's some audience participation show in there. Gee, I wish we could go in. We could take them over to see the Chef Scalapini show. The what? Chef Scalapini show. It's a little boring, but if they applaud hard enough, they'll get dinner free. Oh, well, that takes care of that. Yeah, well, that's what we'll do. Now my mind's more at ease. There'll be no elopement today. <laughs> Saved the day. What a lucky break for us. They had a marriage license. Well, well, what show was that in there? Here comes the bride. <laughs> well, here goes my guardianship. Mr. Law, I've finished signing the papers that you gave me, sir. We'll be right in, Michael. for you. Well, I guess that takes care of all the signing. I know it seems like a lot of red tape, but it's necessary in order to put title to your assets in your married name, Susie. <laughs> What's the matter, Nell? I just realized I'm not a grandmother anymore. <laughs> oh, it's all for the best. You look too young for the part anyhow. <laughs> Everything seems to be in order. Well, I guess that about does it. Susie, I'm no longer your guardian. Excuse me, sir. Harold, you'll have to take over from here. <laughs> Thanks, Mickey. Good luck. I wish I could have a husband and a guardian, too. I'm gonna miss you, Mickey. I'll miss you, too, Susie. Gee, Mickey, I'm sorry we went ahead and got married without your permission. But it was just too good an opportunity to miss. Well, I guess I just wasn't cut out to be a guardian. Uh, one moment, please. There's a codicil to the will. You people never gave me a chance to read it at our last meeting. The codicil? Oh, of course. How could we forget? <laughs> now, if I may have your attention, please, I will read the remainder of Francis <coughs> Mahoney's will. Would you care for a little more water, sir? Don't miss you again. Knowing that the day will come when Michael Mulligan's ward, Susie, will marry and leave him, I wish to provide for a companion to comfort him in his loneliness. I therefore bequeath him to have and to hold, now and in perpetuity, my pet boa constrictor. <laughs> Are you sure you didn't miss a comma somewhere? Period. Mickey Rooney will be back in just a moment. Goody. Goody, 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 goody. Goody. Oh, hi, friends. That was the good word from my wonderful sponsors who'll bring you our next show. Be with us then, won't you? And say, 
You know, there, there really isn't a bow constrictor inside this box. At least I don't think so. <laughs> it's just a trick Mr. Lowe was playing on me. But if you would like to find out whether there is one or there isn't one in the box, you open it up and find out, not me. <laughs>